What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. I'm Anthony and I got a question for y'all. If you know that you've already planted your garden and all your trees are starting to open up and you all of a sudden get a notice from the weather service that there's going to be two nights of freezing weather, what are you going to do? Well, this was precisely the dilemma I had. A little bit of backstory. Usually in my area, because I'm in zone 8A, the last freeze date or frost date in my area is going to be March 15th. That's the usual average. For the last couple of years, it has been a little earlier. And as of this year, the last freeze we actually got was like March 1st. So, okay, no big deal. Usually wise people will not plant till right around Easter. But since it had not been cold hardly at all, it had really been hitting 70s and 80s everything started opening up. When I say everything, I'm talking about the oaks are open, the elms are open, my apple is even open. My apple is usually the one that likes to wait the longest. So uh, since everything was starting to open up, okay, I need to go ahead and get planting because if I don't get a head start now, then uh, I'm not gonna beat the bugs, especially when it comes down to things like zucchini that always get attacked by the squash vine borer in June. So I wanna go ahead and get in the ground as fast as possible so I can get all the zucchini I can before it gets killed. So. That was my dilemma, so I went ahead and planted everything right around March 15th. Unfortunately for me, right at the end of March, we get noticed, hey, there might be a freeze in your area come April 1st. So at first you're thinking, hmm, maybe this is an April Fool's Day prank, maybe it's not, but we have to take everything seriously because we don't want to lose all our crops. Days start getting closer, and sure enough, it's looking like it's going to hit 31, 32 degrees. And that's a problem. If you've ever planted anything, you know that a frost will kill everything that is summertime. Certain things like carrots, garlic, kale can handle a light freeze, but things like corn, squash, beans cannot. You put those things down and even like 33 degrees, you will have some frost damage or freeze damage. So you cannot have those things uh, sitting around that type of temperature. And that's unfortunately what I was dealing with. So I had to go ahead and think on my feet how I was going to address this and keep all my hard work that I already put down. Now in a perfect world, I would have things like floating row covers, whole bunch of you know sheets, drop cloths, something that I could pull over every single one of my trees and all of my plants just in case this happened. But this is so rare to happen in South Carolina that not many people are prepared for things like this. So I'm literally grabbing everything that I had stashed away for this event to see what actually works and what doesn't work. Now, you're gonna see things in these pictures that show what I've done. I had, I mean, I'm literally pulling off bed sheets from the bed to wrap my peach and fig tree. So I put bed sheets, I had moving blankets, I had comforters. I even went to Walmart and bought two little micro fleece whatevers that are made of polyester. Uh, that for two dollars and fifty cents to see if those even worked and of course buckets uh, cardboard boxes styrofoam cooler i'm talking about i used everything i had out of my garage to cover every single one of my plants and i'm going to tell you exactly what was successful and what wasn't so this first picture you're going to see one of my raised beds this bed is things like tomato 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 okra okra jalapeno and onions are scattered in and about Now onions can handle a light freeze, but the rest can't. So I had to cover everything up. And you see in the picture that I covered up with a styrofoam cooler, a couple buckets, little cans that I would use that my baby's formula came in, and a cardboard box and I, the one okra plant I just covered up with straw because I didn't have anything else to cover it. This is what survived. All right, I put this water on top just to show exactly how cold it got. And uh, yeah, it's frozen probably about a good quarter to a half inch. So it definitely got cold enough, that's for sure. All right, so the styrofoam cooler covered up this tomato plant. That survived no problem. That okra was covered by a cardboard box, survived no problem. That little okra plant was just covered by straw. Surprisingly, that survived no problem. Now I used a five gallon bucket to cover up this tomato plant. That did not make it at all. I also used a five gallon bucket to cover up my jalapeno. That didn't work at all either. I even insulated it with straw. The bottom leaves kind of made it, but the top growth, nope. And then this one right here, another tomato. I used one of my baby's formula cans. 
and that survived no problem. So what did I learn from this bed? Five gallon buckets suck. Now in this next picture, you're gonna see where I covered the core and I'll put an arrow to it with these. These are the fleece microfiber, 100% polyester blankets that you can buy from Walmart for $2.50 each on the clearance rack, all right? They're not very big. They're about four by five. And I use two of them to cover up my corn that's actually already in the ground. As you can see, the corn survived no problem. Another look at this picture, you're gonna see two of my other raised beds covered with this blanket and that moving blanket. You know, the blankets that you see on moving trucks that cushion refrigerators and whatever else so they don't get dented. I used both of these on both my other beds. Now, the moving blanket one, the tail end, it wasn't quite long enough, so I had to use two fleece blankets on that backside. But the moving blanket covered up my lima beans and my corn, and this one covered up my butternut squash and my okra. Oh, and one zucchini, I forgot to tell you. But yeah, look, there's llama beans, there's a zucchini. And yes, I'm trying to grow corn in a raised bed to see exactly what happens between the raised bed and in the ground. But look, they all survived. Butternut squash, okra, and all these little onions, they all survived. All right, so now I'm gonna show y'all what happened to all my fruit trees and bushes. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. I did not have enough sheets and everything else in the house, stuff that my wife would actually let me use to cover everything. So I'm gonna be 100% honest. I did not cover my apples, even though they are already blooming. I did not cover my pear tree. I did not cover my cherry tree. I did not cover my strawberries. I only covered one out of all of my blueberries. I did, however, cover my peach tree. I covered my grapes. I covered my hazelnut tree and I covered my fig tree. Now, when I covered my fig and my peach tree, I covered them with the sheets from, that I use on my bed. Now, uh, these are the only ones that I could steal without my wife yelling at me, but I still like to use good quality sheets whenever I sleep. So they're ranging from 500 to 800 thread count and they're 100% cotton. And this is what happened. My apple tree, luckily this one, this is a red delicious apple. The buds haven't opened yet. But uh, they still look like they're alive. Everything looks good. Leaves are fine. That one survived. Here is my pear tree. All the leaves survived, no problem. I did, however, experience some blossom death. I lost two on the bottom here. But as you can see, I still have one left. Oh, nope, this one died. So see? Blossom death. But this one right here, I don't know if the camera can see that. Nope. This one right here survived. So I got about 60% blossom death on that. All right, luckily the cherry just started opening, so I didn't lose anything. It hasn't started blooming yet, and it's literally just starting to bud out. All the leaves are fine. Cherry looks like it made it no problem. Now this one makes me very happy. I literally just planted this tree last fall and I saw everything was starting to come out great and I was like, oh, awesome. And it bloomed, I got good pollination and I had about five flowers that made it. I didn't want to lose those. It's the first year. I'm not trying to, you know, cause any kind of damage on the first year. So I covered this thing up with two blankets or two sheets and it survived. No damage really at all and right here you can see the peaches are still there so we made it on that one all right this is my other apple i've had this one for quite a while uh, about three years now no probably four years now and it's gone from being this tall tiny little stick to being well over my hand however it finally started to bloom this year. And go figure, this is the year that we have the really weird late freeze. I can see from all of these flowers, that one survived, that one survived, 
That one survived. Am I even in frame? Yeah, okay. That one survived. This one is brown in the middle. It did not make it. That one is brown in the middle. It did not make it. And up here, all of those did not make it. So I'm looking at about 40% death on my blooms on this apple tree. This one really breaks my heart because I cover this thing up with three different sheets. It's so wide and spread so big that I had to use three different sheets and try to close all the seams with clothespins. Well, unfortunately, as you can tell, half the tree didn't make it. Half the leaves are dead. But I can tell you one thing I learned. You see where they all died? That was the contact points of where all the blanket was laying and the frost would get on top of the blanket and freeze and this is where all the ice was sitting on the cotton literally the dew would set in it got the blanket wet and then it froze so everything that was touching the blanket or the sheet and froze did not make it the stuff that didn't especially down here. That stuff survived. Now I know it's a fig tree and fig trees are pretty resilient, but I've had this thing in the ground for five years. Two years after planting, we got one of these crazy frosts after this thing was already open and it killed it to the ground. Literally all the, the growth that had grown had frozen and it started from the root ball and came back up. This is how high it got in three years. And then this happens. It's a heartbreaker, but this is a brown turkey fig. And if I don't get any figs this year, if this thing can't make a comeback, I'm digging up and I'm gonna put down a Chicago Hardy because uh, we may get a late freeze every once in a while. This thing opens up super early. So uh, that one hurt. All right, now to the grapes. Guess what I covered the grapes in? Five gallon buckets. Because I thought, hey, five gallon bucket, that's a pretty good, secure way to keep frost off the top of something. Nope. And finally, my strawberries. All the blooms survived. The only damage I had was to some of the leaves, some of the new growth. The new growth went brown, shriveled up very quickly. The leaves that have been there for a little while, some just turned colors, other of them are still green. Fine, no big problem. So these strawberries survived, no issue. As for the blueberries, that's a toss up. I don't know yet. I can't tell from what it looks like. There's really no damage to the blueberries. I had bees visiting them this morning, all the blooms. And if the bees are visiting the blooms, that must mean they're still alive, right? The only thing I can see is some of the leaves turn from green, have a slight purple outline. So some of the leaves may have suffered some issue, but it looks like the fruit is fine on all of them. And the one I covered obviously is perfectly fine because I covered it in a moving blanket. So. Jury's still out on the blueberries. What did I learn throughout this entire excursion? Several things actually. Now the weather forecast specifically stated that it was only gonna get down to 32 degrees both nights. Now when I look on my phone, on my weather service, it said 31 and 31 for both nights. My wife looked at hers and said 32 and 37. Of course things change, I understand that. And for some reason, the weather service is the only place that can continue to be wrong all the time, yet still have a job. But knowing what I know from past experience, the weather forecast is just a forecast and there will always be a five degree one way or the other, usually not on my side. So I plan for the worst and thank God I did. When I woke up both mornings, because my kid wakes me up at like five o'clock in the morning, I looked at the thermometer, which is right outside my door, and the first night it read 27, the second night it read 28 degrees. So what was supposed to be 31, 32, 32 degrees ended up being 27 and 28. That's all the damage you see from a 27, 28 and all together, 
I really can't be too upset. Yeah, I'm bummed out that some of my blooms died, especially on my apples because I've been waiting so long. I'm kind of upset about my grapes. Hopefully they bounce back. But when it comes down to the vegetables, I can replace the tomatoes. I can replace the jalapeno. No big deal. I am extremely impressed by all those blankets, especially the $2.50 polyester fleece blanket from Walmart. Surprisingly enough, the freeze and the frost was on top of this. The water had frozen and there's blocks of ice on top of it, yet the corn was still perfectly fine. So when it comes down to covering up your plants, what kind of material do you use? I had always heard, do not use tarps because plastic does not work. As I found out with five gallon buckets, it's true, plastic does not work. So uh, do not try to cover your plants with five gallon buckets, they don't work at all. Please use something metal. The little cans I used, these things right here that literally have my baby's formula, I save these. Wife's always like, hey, why are you saving trash? Well, guess what? There's metal. They're metal cans, like you would have like a soup. Put them on top, nothing happened. The plants all survived. Metal can works just fine. So, cardboard box worked, styrofoam cooler worked, metal cans worked, <laughs> blankets worked, cheap polyester fleece blankets worked, comforters worked, moving blankets worked, even sheets for the most part worked. And obviously not where the sheets got wet and then froze, but below that worked absolutely just fine. If I were to change something when it comes down to putting sheets, I would put something a little higher and drape the sheets over top of that. That way when it freezes, it's going on like the pieces of wood I put down, not directly on the plant. Because I guarantee if I would have done it that way, then the fig tree probably would have survived. But main lesson here, do not use five gallon buckets to cover from frost. They do not work. Seriously, that is like the number one thing I learned and I had to put it on video because I guarantee there's people out there that have no idea. Someone's gonna learn that fact the hard way and if I can put this video out there to stop that, then so be it, I'm gonna do it. Five gallon buckets do not work. I would have been better off taking a whole bunch of straw and putting it over top of the seedlings, over top of the jalapeno and tomatoes instead of trying to cover them with a five gallon bucket. That's crazy to me that straw, a deep method or deep litter method of straw would have worked better than a five gallon bucket. The reason why is because I literally thought that the five gallon bucket was my absolute best option. I, I thought, okay, everything else has a chance of failure, but I know the five gallon bucket's gonna work. Boy, was I wrong. So I had to put that on a video to hope, you know, stop somebody from making that same mistake. But if you learned something from my experience, Please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll catch you all in the next one, okay? Bye. <laughs> Can you say hi? I'm a big girl. Hi. Look at that face. Hi, everybody. Hi, world. There she is. Say hi, world. <laughs> She's too focused on the cats.